For the first time in history, Russia no longer has the ability to send crew or cargo to the ISS. Sure, they could technically hire SpaceX to fill the gap, but in the long run, that puts extra pressure on Dragon's entire logistics chain. Meanwhile, the aging Roscosmos modules, which make up almost half of the station, have been dealing with serious issues for more than a decade. So, without a launch pad, what happens the next time something goes wrong? Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The International Space Station, a symbol of global cooperation, was originally supposed to be gone by 2016. That was actually part of NASA's 2009 plan, driven by concerns about structural fatigue caused by orbital temperature cycles and constant dynamic loads. So, why is it still up there today? NASA's official explanation is that they want to squeeze as much scientific and technological value out of the ISS as possible. And sure, that's true, but that's not the whole story. The real reason is that technology has advanced so quickly. These days, we see at least two crewed launches to the ISS every year, plus two or three cargo missions. And on every one of those flights, they quietly bring up newer, more advanced hardware to patch, upgrade, or replace aging systems, basically keeping the station alive piece by piece. In fact, on most cargo flights, something like 20 to 30% of the payload isn't science at all, it's home repair. Things like iRosa, the rollout solar arrays, new CO2 scrubbers, upgraded oxygen generation equipment, and even special materials for sealing cracks. And the second reason? It's tied directly to the first. Back in 2010, China officially announced its plan to build the Tiangong Space Station. Since it was built later, its lifespan will naturally extend far beyond that of the ISS. If the ISS were retired too early, it would leave a vacuum, a monopoly in low Earth orbit that China could easily step into. That's why the partners have been working so hard to keep the ISS alive, not just for science, but to make sure the world still has a presence up there. But there's one thing we can't avoid. No matter how much we patch it up, the ISS is getting old, and the modules suffering the most are the early Russian-built ones. Take Zvezda, for example, the heart of the Russian segment providing oxygen, power, and propulsion. It's been hit the hardest. Since 2018, small cracks started forming on its outer shell due to material fatigue from extreme temperature cycles in orbit. Air leakage slowly climbed from 200 to 300 grams per day to 400 to 600 grams per day by 2025. Roscosmos and NASA have tried temporary fixes, epoxy sealant, titanium patches, special clamps installed during spacewalks, but new cracks keep appearing. And at this rate, the leakage could reach a dangerous threshold after this year. Or look back at 2021, when Zarya, the very first ISS module launched in 1998, was found to have surface fractures of its own. They haven't spread yet, but the risk is there, and the only solution so far is constant monitoring. No permanent fix. So the real question is, with the situation getting this urgent, how exactly is Russia supposed to deal with it? The answer becomes even clearer and more alarming when you consider their latest mishap. They accidentally damaged the only launch pad capable of sending Soyuz and Progress missions to the space outpost. More specifically, during the recent launch of Soyuz MS-28, Russia ran into a serious issue at the Baikonur Soyuz launch pad, a pad that's been in service since the 1960s. Its design is classic Soviet engineering. The rocket stands on a massive concrete structure with a deep flame trench below, while the support arms, umbilicals, and the service cabin sit right underneath the engine section. That service cabin rides on rails and allows technicians to access the bottom of the rocket to hook up cables, inspect the engines, and handle ignition preparations. The problem happened because the cabin, which should have been locked in place, wasn't secured properly before launch. When the Soyuz engines ignited, the high-velocity exhaust created a low-pressure zone inside the flame trench, pulling the cabin out of its hidden position. Its front heat shield acted like a giant sail, catching the airflow and ripping the entire structure off the rails before it was thrown into the flame trench and shattered. With the cabin destroyed, the pad currently can't support any Soyuz or Progress launches. That means Russia has temporarily lost its only launch site, capable of sending crew or cargo to the ISS. Roscosmos claims repairs will take just a few weeks, but experts say the damage will need at least half a year to fully restore. And the most immediate consequence, 
The upcoming Progress resupply mission scheduled for December is now expected to be delayed, which means no new experiments going up and no fresh food shipments either. If during this period any of the Russian modules run into new issues like air leaks, the only hope is that the crew already has enough tools and hardware on board to deal with it. And this isn't just a theoretical worry. As early as 2021, technical assessments from Roscosmos and RSC Energia warned that roughly 80% of the Russian segment systems, including Zvezda, Zarya, and even the Soyuz and Progress vehicles, had already outlived their original design life of 10 to 15 years. That means there's a real risk of cascading failures that can't be fixed from the ground, or even with maintenance flights. Vladimir Solovyov, Energia's chief engineer, put it bluntly, once the systems are fully exhausted, unrepairable failures may begin. By 2023, Roscosmos CEO Yuri Borisov confirmed the warning, stating that most of Russia's ISS hardware is now beyond warranty and predicting a wave of failures after 2025. This looming risk was a key reason Russia decided to pull out of the ISS partnership in 2028 instead of 2030 to limit liability for these aging systems. Over the years, temporary fixes have been applied, but core systems like the propulsion units and the electron oxygen generator can't be fully replaced. Because of this, NASA has increasingly relied on commercial spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon, and is also moving forward with a plan to safely deorbit the ISS by 2030 to 2031, ensuring there's no research gap when Russia transitions to its own planned station, ROS. But that's a story for the future. Right now, the bigger worry is whether these aging ISS modules can hold up for the next two to three years until deorbit. What happens if cracks in the old modules worsen, leading to uncontrolled air leaks? In that case, NASA and Roscosmos would immediately activate the long-planned emergency procedures based on years of prior contingency planning. First, the pressure sensors would detect the problem, and the crew, usually prioritizing the American segment near the evacuation and spacecraft, would close the hatches connecting the Russian modules to the rest of the station. This isolates the affected module, preventing leaks from spreading. Meanwhile, Roscosmos would attempt temporary repairs from inside, though fixing such old systems completely is extremely difficult. If the leak exceeds a critical threshold, the hatches would be sealed permanently, limiting ISS operations, reducing available docking ports, increasing fuel demand to maintain orbit and attitude, but still allowing research to continue in the U.S. segment, with support from commercial spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon. In the worst-case scenario, if the entire station were threatened by collapse or depressurization, the emergency evacuation plan would kick in. Both American and Russian crew would return to Earth using Crew Dragon, but what about Russian astronauts actually flying on Dragon in the future? That might not be so simple. Just recently, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev was removed from the Crew-12 mission, set to launch in early 2026 on a SpaceX Crew Dragon. The reason? Alleged violations of U.S. national security rules, ITAR, or the International Traffic and Arms Regulations. Artemyev reportedly took photos of SpaceX engines and sensitive documents at their Hawthorne, California facility, potentially to copy technology. As a result, NASA and Roscosmos replaced him with Andrei Fedyaev. To be clear, this isn't being treated as official espionage, more like an industrial security breach. Whether it was personal curiosity or pressure from Roscosmos to catch up with SpaceX, which Russia once mocked back in the 2000s when Elon Musk tried to buy Russian engines, it's a striking reminder. Flying on Dragon may soon come with extra scrutiny for Russian astronauts. Ironically, the very company Russia once laughed at is now essentially controlling access to the ISS. This also adds a layer of complication to evacuation planning. If the Soyuz launch pad were repaired in time, Russian crew could still use Soyuz for evacuation, with cross-trained backup seats already prepared, according to NASA's $224, $266,000 contract with SpaceX to provide Dragon as a contingency support vehicle. What does this all mean? In less than five short years, from the crew Demo-2 flight in May 2020 to the end of 2025, SpaceX has completely shattered the nearly two-decade monopoly that Soyuz once held. Between 2011 and 2020, 
NASA paid an average of 80 to 90 million dollars per Soyuz seat, sending over four billion dollars straight into Roscosmos's pockets just to get American astronauts to the ISS. But since Crew Dragon became fully operational with Crew One in November 2020, the cost per seat has dropped to around 55 to 60 million dollars. That alone has saved NASA at least 1.5 to 2 billion dollars so far, not counting cargo contracts. But the money is just the tip of the iceberg. More alarming for Russia is that Dragon isn't just replacing seats. It's taking over critical tasks that only Russia used to handle. Since 2023, Cargo Dragon has upgraded Draco engines and auxiliary thrusters, performing reboosts that lift the ISS without needing Zvezda. By December 2025, Dragon had already completed seven independent reboosts, each raising the orbit by one to two kilometers. In other words, the U.S. could maintain the ISS for six to nine months without a single Russian spacecraft. In August 2025, NASA and SpaceX successfully tested a minimum lifeboat scenario. Just one Crew Dragon docked could evacuate all seven astronauts in under 45 minutes, instead of waiting for both Soyuz and Dragon. And now, with Baikonur's Site-31 pad offline indefinitely after the Soyuz MS-28 flight, SpaceX isn't just an alternative. It has become Roscosmos's only lifeline. If the situation drags past March 2026, we could witness a historic first. A crew dragon lifting off from Florida carrying two or three Russian astronauts to save the Russian segment of the ISS, something unimaginable just a decade ago. Right now, getting launches back on track is a real headache for Russia. The first hurdle is simple in theory, but tricky in practice. Technicians need access to the base of the rocket to reconnect all essential cables and equipment.